During the Republican period of Rome, the Romans relied heavily on its allies for additional infantry and cavalry forces to make up for their lack of manpower. In many cases, they recruited from people they had conquered, employing specialists and mercenaries for whatever campaign they were currently waging. One such group of recruited warriors were the ancient Germanic tribesmen from across the Rhine River into Germania. These German warriors were famed for their physique, size, and fearlessness. To Julius Caesar and the Romans, they maintained their hardiness on the battlefield due to their primitive and savage lifestyle. Many of them were considered barbarians even by other tribal groups in the region. However, their societies were more complex than the Romans and others gave them credit for. Julius Caesar began to employ German cavalry in his armies after he had fought against them in battles in 58 and 55 BC, while he was governor of Transalpine Gaul. The German warriors impressed him with their fighting spirit, and he considered them superior to the other tribal allies in his service at the time. He believed their bravery to be unmatched, and the fierce glance in their eyes was more than their enemies could endure. It was during Julius Caesar's conquest of Gaul, where his German mercenaries would rise to the occasion and lead him to victory. He initially had 400 of them, taken from defeated chiefs and nobles from his battles against the German tribes. Keeping them in reserve until critical moments, Julius Caesar used his German cavalry as elite shock troops to turn the tide of battle. Starting in late 53 BC, the Gauls had begun to revolt against the Roman occupation, and Caesar quickly left Italy in February 52 BC to fight against the rebelling forces. At the Battle of Noviodunum Viterigum in 52 BC, Julius Caesar faced off against the famed Gallic resistance leader Vercingetorix of the Arverni tribe for the first time. When Caesar's several thousand strong auxiliary cavalry, composed mainly of allied Gallic riders, initially took a beating against the enemy, he decided to send in his 400 German cavalry. They charged in furiously, scattering the enemy and inflicting heavy casualties. However, shortly afterwards, Caesar faced his first outright defeat in Gaul when he was repulsed at the Siege of Gergovia. He attempted to rush in and take the fort when some of his former Gallic allies rebelled and killed Roman forces and citizens at a city to his rear. He took heavy casualties against Vercingetorix's forces and withdrew back to safer territory. At this point, Caesar found himself in a critical situation in his war against the Gauls. Tribal leaders who had been loyal to Caesar deserted him, switching their allegiance to Vercingetorix. He was elected commander-in-chief of the Gauls, and as many as 45 tribes joined him in the struggle against Rome. To replace his lost allied Gallic cavalry, Caesar also recruited another 600 German mercenaries from across the Rhine River in Germania. Caesar tried to retreat back to the threatened province of Gallia Norbanensis, but Vercingetorix surprised and attacked him again with his cavalry. Caesar's legionnaires hurriedly set up defensive positions, and his auxiliary cavalry managed to keep the Gallic forces temporarily at bay. However, Caesar's German allies wanted no part in a defensive standoff, and managed to gain the summit of a nearby hill in preparation for an offensive attack. They charged down the hill and slammed into the body of the Gallic cavalry and trounced them, pushing them back onto their own infantry. The rout caused the Gallic cavalry to flee the battlefield, and with it, Vercingetorix's forces were defeated and withdrew. For the Gauls, their cavalry was the lifeblood of their forces, and their morale was now severely shaken by their crushing defeat. Caesar now had the upper hand in the war against them. Even with inferior numbers, Caesar managed to hold off Vercingetorix with his small amount of German horsemen. Caesar not only relied on the German cavalry, but he also employed German light infantry who ran on foot as well. In battle, they would run alongside the cavalrymen, holding onto the horse's mane to keep pace. They protected the cavalrymen's flanks, stabbing at the enemy from the sides. This tactic may be why they were so effective on the battlefield during the entire campaign in Gaul. Vercingetorix was now on the defensive in the conflict, and he withdrew his forces to the hill fort of Alicia. Alicia was situated on a plateau. And since it was also surrounded by rivers and streams, the city seemed almost impervious to attack. The entire city was also enclosed by walls and outer trenches. It was here where Caesar's German cavalry made their most significant contribution to his improbable victory. Caesar put his army's incredible engineering ability to use and quickly surrounded Alicia with two concentric rings of towers, ditches, traps, 
covered pits, forts, and camps. The Roman inner ring of fortifications faced the defenders of Alesia, while an outer ring protected Caesar's forces from the anticipated Gallic relief army. In total, nearly 15 miles of walls were created around the plateau. Caesar wanted to keep Vercingetorix and his army trapped inside the city. As the Roman construction was still going on, Vercingetorix suddenly sent out up to 10,000 cavalry to attack Caesar's forces. A large battle ensued between the Gallic cavalry and Caesar's auxiliary cavalry. Caesar kept his German horsemen in reserve as Vercingetorix's forces began to gain the upper hand in the battle between the two cavalries. Caesar then ordered the Germans to attack, and they again turned the tide of the battle, pushing the Gauls back towards the outer walls of the city. The Gauls attempted to flee back into the fortified town, but the gates of the town were shut, and many of them became trapped outside of the walls. A panic ensued as the Germans raced right behind them, running them down and killing the fleeing Gauls that didn't manage to escape back into the city. Vercingetorix's only option now was to send out his remaining cavalry to raise a relief force from their own tribes back in their homelands. With the entire city on the brink of collapse and starvation, his cavalry managed to escape past the Roman defenses before their fortified construction was entirely completed. The siege dragged on until a Gallic relief army finally arrived under Commius, the king of an allied Belgic tribe, with around 120,000 men. Caesar now faced a battle on two fronts and was outnumbered over three to one. The battle began soon afterwards with Vercingetorix storming the inner lines of the Roman defenses, while Commius attacked the outward Roman line with his cavalry, archers, and lightly armed infantry. Caesar's legionnaires fought against Vercingetorix's attack while his auxiliary cavalry attacked the Gallic relief army. The battle dragged on until almost sundown until once again Caesar's German cavalry massed for a decisive charge. They smashed into Commius's horsemen, routed them, and ran them off the battlefield. The Gallic archers were left exposed and easily cut down by Caesar's forces. The Gauls were forced to call off the attack. The Gauls next tried to attack at night time, but they were pushed back by Roman siege engines. Finally, by the fourth day, Caesar attacked Commius's infantry from the front, while his German cavalry hit them from behind, scattering and utterly crushing them. The Germans pursued them from the battlefield, cutting them down as they fled. With no hope of defeating the Romans, Vercingetorix surrendered the next day, becoming Caesar's prisoner. Julius Caesar continued mopping up operations to pacify the remaining Gallic rebels until 50 BC, but after Alesia, the war was most likely already over, as no other Gallic leader could unite the remaining tribes against the Romans. Caesar's victory in the Siege of Alesia is still considered one of the most incredible feats in military history. The victory, in large part, was due to the daring and decisiveness of his German cavalry. In the Roman Civil War, beginning in 49 BC, Julius Caesar's German cavalry also played a major role in his eventual victory that made him dictator. The Roman Senate ordered Caesar to relinquish command of his army after the Gallic Wars, but he refused and instead marched them onto Rome. The ensuing civil war was fought between Julius Caesar and the Roman Senate, and their various supporters on each side. The war was fought all around the Roman Republic, including Italy, Greece, Spain, and North Africa. The Germans fought on foot in Greece, and even swam across a canal in Egypt on horseback to flank the enemy forces. By 45 BC, Julius Caesar had won the war and became dictator for life. Some of his German cavalry stayed in Roman service, but many of them disbanded and went back to their tribes and homelands across the Rhine with much loot and rewards from their time in Caesar's army. Julius Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC and a new civil war began, with no doubt many German mercenaries again taking part in the various battles.